The Life and Works of Dorothea Lange. Dorothea Lange was a photographer and photojournalist who pursued her passion for documenting people and real moments of life. She and her works became known by their dramatic angles and compositions as well as for the powerful effect they had on viewers. What started out as an interest for her led Lang to a career and a legacy. Born and raised in New Jersey, Dorothea Nutshorn Lang was an average middle class child. Her father, Heinrich Nutshorn, was a lawyer while her mother, Johanna Lang, was a stay at home mom. Her parents were each advocates of her education and exposed her to literature and creative arts early on during her childhood. At the age of seven, Dorothea Lane contracted polio disease. This disease was a contagious viral illness that could cause nerve injury, paralysis, difficulty breathing, and even death. Lane's case of polio weakened her right leg, causing her to walk with a limp. Lane claimed that polio was the most important thing that had happened to her because it formed, guided, instructed, helped, and humiliated her. Early in Dorothea's life, her father, Heinrich Nudshorn, left her family. After the divorce, Dorothea blamed her father so much that she no longer wanted to carry his last name. She took on her mom's maiden name, officially becoming Dorothea Lang. They moved in with her grandmother, who was a creative seamstress and who later influenced Dorothea's artistic views that she'd one day use in photography. After completing high school, Lang decided to study at the New York Training School for Teachers in 1913. However, she quickly found that education was not her interest, so she turned her focus to photography. She later went on to study art at Columbus University. Seeking more knowledge within photography, Lang contacted successful photographers such as Arnold Gimp and Clarence White. They taught her skills of trade, how to make proofs, how to retouch pictures, and how to mount images. While in a photography class with Clarence White, Lang learned to photograph everyday objects with a new perspective of truly seeing them. This skill was one that she would later carry over into her career. After furthering her education in photography, Dorothea Lang and her actress friend, Florence Bates, traveled. Ending up in San Francisco, they supported themselves with Lang's skills in photography. While there, Lang and her friend were robbed. They lost all of their money, so they had no other choice than to stay in San Francisco for some short period of time. Regardless of the unfortunate circumstances that led her to staying in San Francisco, Dorothea Lang decided to make the most of her time there. After meeting numerous gallery patrons and wealthy business owners, Lang made beneficial and professional connections with them. She was able to open up her own portrait photography studio in San Francisco during 1919 at the age of 24. Sometime later, Lang met muralist Maynard Dixon. They got married and started a life together. In the 1920s, Dixon and Lang traveled with one another around the Southwest, each working within their own element. Dixon would paint such things as Native Americans and landscapes while Lang photographed them. This is one point at which Lang's documentary photography career took off. During the 1930s and the Great Depression era, Lang saw the effects of financial hardship on the people around her. This caused her to become dissatisfied with her portraiture work. She then decided to take on documentary photography in hopes to produce a social change. She went to the streets of San Francisco, the West Coast, the South, and the Midwest and photographed suffering and poverty, as well as damage from the Dust Bowl migration camps, labor strikes, and bread lines. After pursuing documentary photography in San Francisco and capturing the university there, Lang was asked to assist university professor and labor economist Paul Taylor on a study for the Farm Security Administration. The two traveled together as a team in which Taylor wrote reports on rural hardship while Lang photographed them. Taylor later became Lang's second husband.
Lang's work was often close-ups and powerful compositions. She captured farmers and their empty crops, as well as mothers and their hungry children. Lang was known to be patient and very personal with those who were in her images before actually photographing them. This allowed her to get very raw, intimate, and informative images like that of the migrant mother. Some images even had captions from the very conversations that Lang held with those who were pictured in them. Lang's career progressed when she was hired by the Office of War Information during World War II, in which she photographed the internment of Japanese Americans, and again in 1945, when she photographed the San Francisco Conference that created the United Nations. Some of Lang's images during this time were so powerful and controversial regarding the war that she was not able to see them for 20 years. Apart from the OWI, Dorothea Lang took part in photojournalism assignments for other big-name companies like Life Magazine and Fortune Magazine. Aside from this, Lang also co-founded a small publishing house that made high-end photography books. This business was named Aperture. In 1940, Lang became the first woman to receive a Guggenheim Fellowship Award given to individuals that demonstrate exceptional creative ability in the arts. Lang also received other honors and rewards for her notorious works. Her image, Migrant Mother, now hangs in the Library of Congress, while some of her other works appear in the Family of Man exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art. Lang chose to take a break from photography for some time. During this period, she taught a photography course at the California School of Fine Arts. She taught with techniques and methods from her former teacher, Clarence White. Shortly after teaching this course, she chose to work within photography again, even though her health was diminishing. Later, Lang was able to collaborate with New York's Museum of Modern Art on her very first solo exhibition. Along with this, Lang published numerous books with her work and wisdom, such as Photographs of a Lifetime, Impounded, Aperture Masters of Photography, and An American Exodus. In 1945, Lang was diagnosed with gallbladder disease. Later, she learned that she had been misdiagnosed with gallbladder disease and then was diagnosed with esophageal cancer instead. This brought her much trouble and pain, but even so, she and her husband traveled around the world until she passed away in October of 1965. After living an influential life, several awards have been set up in Dorothea Lang's name. There is a Lang Taylor Prize for Excellence in Documentary Studies, as well as the Lang Fellowship for Documentary Photography. There is a school named in honor of Lang, and she has also been inducted into the California Hall of Fame. Dorothea Lang leaves behind a legacy for independent women photographers. She made an impact with the reality she documented with her camera, and she brought much understanding to so many people about real life and the pain that it can oftentimes bring. All the while, her images were powerful, strong, and beautiful just as she herself was.